Hydraulics. First of all, we're going to talk about the system, the system overview and the components. While I'm talking to you, I will also put some um, uh, pictures up of the systems, uh, some of the systems pages you'll see on the SD page on the Airbus and some of the uh, overhead panel as well. So hopefully you find that useful. Um, so we do that first. Um, then we're going to go on to the services. So the services that the hydraulic systems supply, um, such as uh, the flight controls. We're going to have a, a, a look at the flight control schematic, and I'm going to give you a couple of tips on, on some handy ways that you can remember off the top of your head um, um, which services supply what. Now, you don't have to... Okay, you don't have to remember this stuff really. It's all there in the QRH and the ECAM's pretty good at telling you what you've got and what you haven't got. But I do believe if you have an understanding of these things, a core understanding, without having to refer to everything, then I think that makes you a better pilot. Um, you don't have to know everything, but if something happens in the Airbus and you've already got a good sort of system knowledge and understanding as to how that might affect you, I think you have a much broader uh, understanding of the situation. So I'm going to show you uh, a really nifty, um, not mnemonic as such, almost a bit of a rhyme to help you uh, understand that. And then lastly, what we're going to do is go on to system failures. So we're going to look at dual system failures and also where they appear in the QRH. I'm going to look at what it is, what the the consequences of the failure are um, and again give you a broad picture of an understanding of which is worst. Good okay so that's really what I've written there on the board. System overview, services flight control schematics and a little tip on how to remember it. I'm not sure if you can see this because I still haven't invested in some decent lighting for this room so I've got my really naff spotlights which were here when we bought the house. I'm gonna have to do something about that. Um, Otherwise, it looks like there's some sort of weird thing going on here. Uh, and system failures, considerations, and dual hydraulic failures. Good. So I'm going to pause it now. I'm going to draw something on the board, uh, talk about the um, system overview, and then, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you again in just a second. As if by magic, the hydraulic system has appeared on the board. Um, one thing I did realise, I thought it would be really... A uh, clever idea to colour code the hydraulic uh, reservoirs until it came to the yellow, <coughs> which you can't see. Anyway, on the very extreme right hand side there, you may recognise by the layout of the dark room, that is the yellow system. Um, but the green and the blue are um, hopefully a little bit more uh, self-explanatory. Um, so I'm just going to go through the system now and we'll talk about what services uh, they provide and a good way of actually remembering uh, some of the flight control uh, bits and pieces, which I, which I mentioned to you um, uh, earlier on. So you'll see straight off from the uh, board, uh, from, from, the, from the picture, that we have three hydraulic systems on the, on the Airbus. We have the green, uh, we have the blue, uh, and we have the yellow. The green, sometimes called the, the main system, the master system, because it pretty much does everything. Um, the uh, blue system um, is fairly unique in so much as it's purely uh, electrical powered off the AC bus um, and so when you get first engine start that will come on unless you override it um, and also powers the rats. Um, I spoke about the rat in a bit more detail in the previous video or one of my other videos in electrics so if you want to know more about the rat uh, you can talk about that. It's beyond the scope of of this and of course the yellow system um, has um, again its own its own reservoir and um, has three sources of, of, of pressurizing itself uh, which, which I'll come to in a moment and then of course they all go off uh, to the uh, services of the various uh, flight controls and um, um, systems uh, on board uh, on board the aircraft. Um, there's a few things that they've uh, got in common in terms of engine driven pumps, electric pumps, um, 
which I'll, I'll come on to. But essentially, let's just work from the bottom up, shall we? Um, looking at the uh, green system first, we come towards a, an SOV, a shut-off valve. Um, when you are running an engine failure and it's damaged, um, one of the, one of the um, items that the ECAM will require you to do is press the um, fire push button. Uh, cover switch you always confirm and um, one of the items that the fire push button uh, will do uh, is turn off HP valves, it'll turn off um, uh, various ancillaries that are at attached to the engine including uh, the hydraulics because uh, if you've got a damaged engine uh, what you don't want is things flailing around and affecting the hydraulic system. So, um, yeah, so that's what that that's what that's going to do. Then it comes off to an engine-driven pump. Um, so, if that engine fails, then so will the engine-driven pump uh, associated with it, uh, particularly if it seizes. Okay, if it windmills, then you know you'll be surprised. Actually, fairly low RPM. Um, but actually keep driving the green hydraulic. So uh, yeah, that, that, that's the reality. But if you shut the engine down and it's seized and ain't driving, then you're not driving the uh, engine driven pump. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, all of these reservoirs are actually pressurized by uh, engine bleed air. I forget which stage it is. You can look it up if you're really interested, but suffice to say they are pressurized and that's to prevent pump cavitation. Um, pump cavitation is basically the pump sucking in air. Um, by pressurizing the system, you drive that fluid uh, into the pump so that it's not um, driving air around. And obviously much more efficient prevents pump, uh, pump failure. Okay, so pressurized from the um, uh, bleed air, valve, engine driven pump, then off to an ACC, this is an accumulator. Um, and the idea of the accumulator is essentially to take variances out in the system. So, you know, when they're not under load in the cruise, gear is up, flight controls are all neutral, not an awful lot going on. But as you're starting to configure, you're getting the gear down, you're getting the flaps down, uh, you're moving the control services in a gusty crosswind, um, ailerons are moving, spoilers are moving. Um, there's a lot of demand, peaks and troughs. Um, in the system. So in order to balance that out, we've got an accumulator and all three systems have that in common. Um, then it goes off towards um, the uh, services. Um, prior to the services, I probably could have written this up now, but I'm not going to show you the back of my head again, um, is the priority valves. And if you have a look in the QRH under operational data, you can see all this. Um, the priority valves are there basically to shut off high demand services in case uh, or in the event of um, uh, low pressure um, in that associated system so that um, you know things like uh, the gear etc are high demand devices so you've got low pressure in there um, the shut off valve will prevent you from putting the gear down that's why you've got to do it manually um, and that's to give you enough um, could, uh, enough fluid i guess uh for flying the airplane so for the flight controls okay so that's what the priority valves do um and all the uh green the blue and the yellow again have that um, have that in common okay you can see how that's laid out in the qrh in the operational data you can see the sort of services and the line diagram up there i've got to be honest it ain't overly clear but um just reading the definition of the uh, priority valves in the FCOM um, goes so, some way in explaining that. Okay, so the green system itself is pretty straightforward, really. Um, so as we go into the blue system, then slightly more uh, co complicated, but essentially it's the same sort of thing. Um, the pressurised uh, reservoir then uh, is uh, uh, fed uh, to um, a uh, rat. Uh, and those of you who watched my electrical video, you know it's the rat has got a figure of eight. It takes eight seconds to come down, deploy do its bit uh, and then attach itself to the heart of the system, but you'll see all that. Um, and it also has uh, an electrical uh, driven pump. There is no engine driven pump associated with the blue system. It is purely an electrical um, uh, driven system, okay? It goes up to an accumulator, which then goes up to the services and again, has its own uh, priority valve. So yeah, okay, rats and um, electrically uh, driven pump uh, off the AC bus, all right? Pretty cool. 
Um, right, so oh, one other question I often get asked is, well, if we have a blue system hydraulic failure, I'm jumping up a little, jumping ahead a little bit here, um, but I've just got a little note here to explain it. Why is it when the blue system fails, does it not ask you to drop the rat? Well, because it's a single failure. You'll only ever, the ECAM will only ever ask you to drop the blue, drop the rat, uh, if, if it's a dual hydraulic. So if you lose blue and yellow uh, uh, pressure, that is not uh, low level, um, or you lost uh, the green and the blue, uh, that's the only time it'll ask you to drop the rat. So yeah, system sing single failures, uh, Airbus is um, uh, very happy, okay? So um, yellow system, okay, so the yellow system's a little bit more involved. It's got um, th three sources of, of driving itself. Again, it's got a shut off valve there in commonality with the um, green system. Just note it's only the green and the yellow that have the shut off valves because they're the ones that are engine driven. Um, and then you've got the engine driven pump. The yellow system also has an electrical pump. So if your airline a single engine taxi in and out um, and the pump is available and some various other caveats um, then you'll be driving a yellow system from the uh, electric pump um, also if you have a pump low pressure then the yellow pump can come in such as an engine driven pump failure for example uh, and also uh, this is my attempt at drawing a hand pump so if there is no electrical power uh, to the aircraft, there's no ground service bus, no ground power to the aircraft at all, the poor ginger beers uh, have to, uh, or the ground handling crew, um, have to activate that hand pump. I don't know if you've ever had to do it. Uh, it's on, on the right-hand side of the aircraft, behind uh, the wing on the sort of fairing of the aircraft on the sort of the corner of the belly. Um, you open the hatch and uh, that's where you pull the handle out and it extends, it twists to lock, then it's got this kind of, um, uh, it's not knurl, is it? But it's, it's got this um, sort of shaft uh, head on it and you have to marry up the head on the handle uh, to the shaft and it's got a lot of spines, splines, splined, yeah, um, head. And you match it up uh, on there and then you have to literally, uh, once you crack the door open, you then have to hand pump it. I mean, seriously, it takes a, a long time. And if you operate without a yellow electric pump um, operating on your aircraft and you're on a four set today and you turn up to somewhere and they don't understand how to operate it and they're like, mm, yes, they're doing that for one or two reasons. One, they genuinely don't understand it or two, they don't want to touch it. So it's going to be down to uh, you uh, to do it. And you have to hand pump that thing open and it just takes forever. Um, in order to close the door, um, gosh, yes, yeah. um, I seem to remember, you keep having to pump it up, keep pumping, pumping, pumping until it's fully open, make sure it's locked, and then keep pumping beyond that, and then it closes. And you either have to do a selective valve close as well. I, I can't remember. Take a look in the FCOM. Uh, I'm not going to talk too, too much about that, but uh, it's just quite a funny thing if you if, if you have to do it. It's always on a four-set go. Uh, cargo door, uh, and then you've got the accumulator, which then goes off to the... Uh, services via the priority valve uh, common to uh, the other two systems. Whew, I think it's just about there. Um, you notice this little purple uh, line here, which goes over the top of the blue system. It's got nothing to do with the blue system at all. This is our PTU or power transfer unit. The whole purpose of that is if we have low pressure for a green or a yellow system, the side that is good, uh, so let's just say, for example, the green system well, had a low pressure, the engine-driven pump had failed for whatever reason, not low level, okay, because you've got to turn the PTU off in that case. Um, if the pressure is, which is normally operating at 3,000 PSI, drops by 500, what the PTU will do is it will use the pressure in the yellow system to drive a motor, which will then drive the yellow, the drive the green system. Okay, so all this will be kind of amber because it, it will be dead. And then anything upstream of that will be green. And the PTU will then power the services on the green system. Um, notice there is no power, there is no, there is no liquid transfer. Okay, so the PTU doesn't take yellow fluid and put it into the green. Okay, it doesn't do that, all right? It's two little motors here, you can see, yeah? So that motor will take the pressure by the, by the yellow system to drive a motor 
to drive the green system. That's what the PTU does, okay? You'll be using that if you're doing single engine stuff. You'll be very um, um, common uh, procedure um, in the Airbus when dealing with hydraulic failures. Sometimes you get a fault light above, um, such as of an overheat or low level, um, in which case you've got to turn it off, otherwise that can uh, overheat the live system and, and, and you don't want a hot pump uh, driving fluid uh, and uh, overheating your uh, only remaining hydraulic system. That's a, that's a bad day, that's a bad day. Uh, right, okay, so have I discussed everything here? Systems, green and yellow shutoff valves, uh, engine pumps, electrical pumps, um, rats blue, yes. Yes, accumulators, yes, priority bound, yes. Time for a break. I'm going to clear this board and I'm going to draw you now um, the services, um, such as the flight controls and stuff and a nifty way of how to remember things. So I'll be back in just a moment. As if by magic. Uh, some of you would have seen this before, um, but I remember when I was uh, first studying the Airbus, um, finding the FCOM sort of pretty tricky. Um, I needed a way to remember stuff. Um, some of this I've picked up, some of it I've, I've, I've made up. Um, stuff I've made up will probably, might even be actually obvious because um, it's fairly unique to me. You, you almost certainly won't have heard it before. Um, uh, at the top here, we've got the, we've got the, the, the wing uh, cross section. And I'm gonna talk about um, you know, how, how I remember how which services uh, cover what so if you've got a green and blue hydraulic failure or you've got a green and yellow or blue and yellow whatever it might be um uh, you'll have an, a broad idea of what's what's going to how it's going to affect you almost instantly uh what, what your um your biggest issues are going to be for you okay um so that that's the top half of the diagram the bottom half of the diagram is the wing and it is the uh, spoilers, uh, flight spoilers, ground spoilers, etc. ailerons, the uh, ELAX, ELAX one and two. Stick with it, stick with it. As soon as you start mentioning ELAX and sex to people, they switch off, but stick with this because I'm, I'm gonna, I'll tell you a really easy way to remember it. Um, elevator, aileron controls, uh, spoiler elevator controls, uh, your stab, your elevator, and your rudder. Okay, so here's the cross section on the wing. This is how I remember it. Okay, guys, just uh, an edit here, just to simplify things here. I've drawn the cross, cross section of the aerofoil. Um, what you'll notice here is the green with the uh, gear and a dotted line that runs all the way around the aerofoil. That's because the green system not only does the gear, but it also provides backup for the blue and the yellow the slats and the flaps so on the leading edge there you can see in the blue system would look after the slats and on the yellow system you can't quite see it very well here because it's uh, the lighting is not very good uh, but that looks after the uh, flaps the green system as i say looks after the gear and then uh, backs up everything else single failures if we were to lose the blue then the slats would run slowly if we were to lose the yellow then the flaps would run slowly it's only in the dual failures that we lose those services. So green and blue, then you would lose uh, the gear and it would require manual extension. And then you would also lose the slats. If you were to lose green and yellow, then obviously you'd lose the gear with gravity extension and you would lose the flaps. Hopefully that makes sense. The only other thing to add um, is that in the event of a blue and yellow system failure, you would still need to gravity extend the gear because that's just to protect the, the only remaining system. But here's, here's a nifty way of remembering this. I'm only going to go through it once because you can rewind and, and go forward and rewind and go forward and rewind. And go forward. Um, so the way that I uh, remember it, uh, and I've, I've drawn this out um, quite a few times, um, and again, it's a, it's a good it's a good to know thing, a really nice to know thing, but it's not absolutely essential. But it will it will just improve your a broader understanding. So the way I the way the way I remember it is green, yellow, blue, yellow, green, green, blue, green, yellow, blue, yellow, green, green, blue. All right, there are your spoilers. There are your ailerons. Okay, ELAC one dash two, and then SEC two double one double three. Green, yellow, blue, yellow, green, green, blue. ELAC one slash two, two double one double three. 
done. That's how I remember what does what. So you could lose a hydraulic system and you could also lose uh, an ELAC and you, you, know, you could have double failures uh, of these systems here because of a certain, an ELAC will control one of these services. Again, you can expand on this in the, in the FCOM if you want to, and it will show you which hydraulic system is prioritized with which ELAC. I think largely beyond what I'm trying to achieve here. Um, if you just come away with an understanding of how this is all laid out, that's perfect for me, okay? Um, and so, so that's what I start off with. I draw the picture there, I, re I, I, I review this, and then I come on to the stab, I come on to the elevator, and then I come on to the um, rudder. And there are some common themes here when you're trying to uh, remember how this is laid out. So you'll notice here the ailerons are blue and green. Well, interestingly, so is the left, so is the left elevator in exactly the same format, blue and green, okay? Just remember that, blue and green, just remember that time. Okay, if you have a look at the right-hand uh, elevator, you know that on the outside of the aileron is blue. Well, that's the same um, with the elevator. And if you're going to complete the elevator, um, you don't want green and blue here, do you? Because that will mean <laughs> you'll lose everything. Um, so they've made that yellow. Make sense? Yeah. So exactly the same here, exactly the same here. Blue comes across, oh, oops, uh, blue comes across, and then we just drop down a yellow. And interestingly, look, yellow is just above, and green is just above. So green goes there, uh, yeah, green goes there, and yellow goes there, all right? So from starting this off, you can then draw your elevators. You then know what powers your uh, stab trim, and uh, as you come down to the um, um, as you come down to the rudder, again it's green and yellow, green and yellow, and then blue. That's it. So just remember that green, yellow, blue, yellow, green, green, blue. Elac one dash two, two double one double three. That's the same. Drop that down. Yellow, green and yellow, green, yellow, blue. Okay. Job done. <laughs> So, uh, right, so hydraulics then, system failures, uh, excuse me, a summary. Um, so the um, dual hydraulic failures, as you know, um, you go through the ECAM, um, you get yourself to the status page, uh, reset expanded checklists. Some of the expanded checklists that you're gonna want to refer to um, is the summary pages. And they, they are fantastic because they tell you how to deal with it in the cruise. Um, any speed uh, con uh, constraints, particularly for an alternate law, because you don't have the uh, overspeed protection, just the stability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and um, how to deal with the approach, how to configure, um, and landing, anything you need to consider during the landing as well. So they, they you know, have that on your uh, the pilot module, have that on their uh, on their uh, table, uh, and you know, talking through it as you, as you go through it. They really are fantastic. Um, so. Going through these dual hydraulic failures, now, now you've got my way to remember um, how the hydraulic control services are laid out. You're going to be all over this immediately. Uh, you won't even need to read this. You'll be able to tell me um, what the consequences of the failure are. Um, okay, given uh, I've uh, gone through the videos to make some uh, material edits, it's given the opportunity to make some edits here to the uh, briefing as well. And uh, reviewing this, it, it, I did make it sound a little bit complicated and a little bit long-winded. So the whole point of this really is to try and uh, simplify things. So for the large part, dual hydraulic failures are going to lead to alternate and direct law. The only exception to that is the uh, blue and the yellow, which uh, maintains uh, normal law throughout. Um, the green and yellow is the first one I talk about here and a big overview on the green and yellow is essentially the uh, landing distance. It's the, the longer of the uh, options for the uh, dual hydraulic failures. Obviously green and yellow's uh, handling in terms of how you actually manage your approach, that's all detailed in the FCTM as it is for all three hydraulic failures or dual hydraulic failures I should say, uh, as well as in the QRH uh, summaries in terms of stable approach and how you configure flap and when you actually select your gear. That's all worth a, a review. Um, but going back to the green and yellow here, it's alternate then to uh, direct law. We remember from the previous brief on the 
hydraulic supply that if we lose a green and the yellow then we're going to lose the flaps and the only uh, services that are available to us then will be the slats the green is the is lost uh, and so uh, we have to have the uh, uh, gear extended by a gravity extension and that procedure rather conveniently is on the uh, a, a summary page for you as well so no flaps no reverses we've lost our normal braking and so it's the landing distance that's the biggest issue now i've put a reference here of 2500 meters that's purely a reference that's uh, from what i've uh, seen in the qrh because for you and your airline will make your own uh, performance calculation and reference but this is just big picture stuff okay just to give you an idea of uh, what sort of uh, considerations you'll need for the uh, for the green and yellow so yeah that that's basically it's a landing distance issue and uh, there's a way to manage this but that's your biggest concern really with uh, green and yellow we've lost normal braking no flaps it's landing distance going on to the uh, green and blue then we remember with no green and blue we get uh, no slats so not so much a landing distance uh, issue here more a controllability so uh, we've got alternate law then into uh, direct law again we're going to lose both order pilots when we go into direct law uh, oh sorry when we lose both uh, hydraulic systems then the gravity gear extension comes into play again because of course we've lost the green I've mentioned already there's no slats but remember from the hydraulic layout we have no aileron and uh, we've only got one elevator with a green and blue so this is a controllability issue uh, here and as recommended in the FCTM and in the uh, QRH summaries the gear comes down at uh, 200 knots to give you better control of the aircraft as you have no slats at around 200 knots losing one elevator as well the airbus has a uh, asymmetric uh, law feature if you like that if it loses one control surface of the elevator or one elevator then to prevent any uh, excessive asymmetric loads it limits the amount of travel that the remaining elevator can complete so if you're looking at a go around of course you're going around on one elevator with a limited uh, deflection available and of course you're going to be in direct law they've also got no ailerons and so you know lateral stability and lateral control as well as pitch control are compromised so green and blue is very much a controllability issue and you can see here for the landing distance at uh, uh, suggested here at 1700 is a reference remember then uh, landing distance isn't necessarily going to be your biggest enemy the blue and yellow not spoken about much because you rarely see it because it's really not much of uh, what much of an issue yes you lose both autopilots but the aircraft remains in uh, normal law and we still have to get the gravity gear extension because it's the remaining system we don't want to overload it and so to protect our remaining system we uh, extend the gear by gravity means only reference distance there is 1200 meters reference uh, again so really uh, not uh, a big uh, issue for you there at all so hopefully that just gives you um, a sort of summary of the three systems um, your choice obviously as to which ones you would prefer um, but in in terms of broad kind of overview what a dual hydraulic failure means which is going to cause you the biggest issue with with uh, controllability or, or landing distance um, one thing to bear in mind also that I, the reference distance here of two and a half thousand meters the green and yellow obviously you need to add your factor on top of that but you know largely around Europe most runways are over 3,000 meters in fact when they build a runway in Europe they don't get out of bed unless it's they're building something at least three kilometers long so you know whilst it is a landing distance issue and it, and it is and it obviously needs consideration there are that you, you're not going to be short of three kilometer runways uh, around Europe so just something to bear in mind and that's it guys I think I think that's all I wanted to say uh, if I come down to my notes here. Yeah, I, I don't have anything else for you. So I hope that's clear. I hope you have a good overview of the system. You've got some way of remembering what controls what and some way of remembering uh, which is the worst uh, failure and some of the mechanics uh, behind that. Thanks ever so much for watching. Um, if this is the first time you've seen this channel, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you know more um, now than when you uh, clicked uh, watch um, and it's been of some use to you. Um, 
I'm really grateful for you for watching. Thanks for uh, supporting me by um, subscribing and I look forward to um, um, putting something uh, together for you for the, uh, for the next uh, video. Um, keep your heads up. It's a really difficult time at the moment with, with COVID. Um, I, I, we're right in the thick of it at the moment. I dare say we'll see probably more of these lockdowns. Who knows? But, um, you know, we're all really professional people. This is a really good time now. I know there's a lot of uncertainty going on. Um, but this is a really good time now to start reviewing these things um, and to keep your... Um, I, I call it keep the plates spinning. You, you know what I mean? In this sort of circus act where they've got these plates uh, spinning on these little poles, and you know, if you focus on one thing too much, uh, then the other ones sort of wobble. What, what I'm, what I'm, I encourage you to do is to keep all those plates spinning, uh, so that when you come back to work on your recency training, uh, or, you, or even just get back in the aircraft again, you know, it feels a less of an alien place. When you come to the simulator to do your uh, LPC, OPC. Uh, it's less of an alien place to be and uh, you know your general knowledge and understanding is um, much better than than um, than it would otherwise uh, have been and if these videos go any way uh, in some in any way towards uh, helping you with that I'm super pleased so once again thanks for watching I'll see you again soon